Hello everyone, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. This is Eric KJ4YZI and you're watching Ham Radio Concepts. And in this future video series that we're making now, we're focusing on some real high-end SDR ham radio gear like this that you're about to see here. My friends at Gigaparts were kind enough to let me borrow the, what you're gonna see here, the Expert Electronics Sun SDR2 Pro a full SDR, direct up conversion, direct down conversion, HF 6 meter and 2 meter VHF SDR transceiver, along with the big brother, the Sun SDR2 DX, which we're gonna show you in another video. And I also have the Expert Electronics MB1 Prime 2021. <laughs> Thank you very much, my friend. All the best, you and you and take care, my friend. Stay safe and send the trees. As far as I know, the only one in North America at this time. And I'm going to be playing with this stuff, and this is going to warrant a lot of videos because there's so much you can do with stuff like this. SDR is the future of ham radio, and having this stuff at my hands right here has come a long way since I started this YouTube channel. To be able to play with stuff like this and to be at the cusp of technology is just amazing. I'm also going to show you the software here, which is made exclusively by Expert Electronics, the Expert SDR2 software, which is built by them and implemented to use exclusively with their radios and gear. Now, the cool thing is that MB1 transceiver has that built into the radio on a Windows 10 platform. We're going to show you that soon. That thing is amazing. But in the meantime, we're going to start now with the Sun SDR2 Pro. Okay, and we're gonna get into it right now on Ham Radio Concepts. Ham Radio Concepts is brought to you by hamradioprep.com. It's never been easier to learn about ham radio before you take the exam. And Ham Radio Prep makes it fun and guarantees your success. Visit hamradioprep.com. Use the code ERIC20 to instantly save 20% off every course you buy. Remember the name, hamradioprep.com. Com. So the Sun SDR2 Pro, looking at the box, this is not what you're traditionally used to on a ham radio, right? You don't have buttons and knobs and it doesn't look like anything more than a computer, but what's inside is very, very powerful as far as technology is concerned and the build quality and the research and development that has went into this. They've been around for a few years, this company, okay? They've made other things. They make the little Calibri, and they make the, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, other uh, SDR receivers. But as coming into the market, uh, really wanting to come into the market as a one-stop, full-fledged SDR radio like this, a solid case. I love the look and the feel of this. Very modern, very modern looking. Heat sink on the top, okay? On the front, what you have? Now, this, this, this is why I need to explain this in multiple videos and see different configurations, okay? So you have a, a quarter inch headphones jack, a quarter inch mic jack, and then an RJ45 mic jack and a power button. So a couple different ways of doing this. You can use this radio right here through your computer exclusively with, a, with your uh, computer speakers that you have on the sound card out. You know, essentially using the sound card on your computer to have audio in and out. Okay, so if you have a good Heil headset that you use on your computer, you can plug that into the mic in on your computer, and then you can run speakers out of the computer to a nice set of JBL or MB Quart or Martin Logans. I mean, you're talking, if you want to sound really, really good, and you want to have it sound, a sideband sound like FM, it's going to happen on something like this. Now, if you didn't want to do it solely through a computer, you could do what I like to do um, half, uh, halfway here, because... I tend to like having a mic in my hand and it seem like I'm still using a radio, okay? So for an example, this microphone comes with the MB1 that I have, but I'm gonna use it for now with this, but the microphone is a standard Yaesu type eight pin. If you have an existing Yaesu microphone, RJ45, you can plug it in right here and you can use this, transmit through the front and you can have the audio coming out of the computer, okay? or you can have the mic going in here and the audio coming out of here. So you're not using your computer for sound at all. Okay. Um, and the power button. So that's one way. And they do give you in the box adapters for that for eighth inch to quarter inch adapters. Okay. 
Now on the back, a lot of connections in the back here. All right, let's look at this. Now these are gold plated. All right, and to start, we're going to show you this here. We have three um, mini UHF connectors that are gold plated. Now the reason they're using mini uh, UHF is because of size on the back panel here. And you may say, well, I don't have that. Now I gotta buy an adapter. No, I actually give you an adapter which is mini UHF to SO239, one foot jumper. If you have an adapter, good, but this is a quality made here. And you may be thinking, well, they did that for lower loss. Well, if they did do that for a lower loss in the SO239, you're gonna lose whatever more loss that you gain through a jumper like this. So I'm gonna say that they did this for space on the bottom, okay? And, and that keeps it smaller so I could put three. Because look, if you had three of the SO239s, on the back like this it would take a lot more you know room on the board okay now uh what else i put this back on here we also have now the good thing about something like this also okay yes you can use it remotely remote operation okay and uh everything happens through one cable if you want this rj45 lan connection right here you can simply connect this with just a simple IP change for IP address or through a router, however you have your home network set up. You can go from a computer right to this, and with the IP setting, everything happens through this. The cat control, the audio in and out, everything happens through one plug. So no interfaces needed, that's pretty cool, okay? You also have a key jack in the back. The power cord is a four pin Molex, all right? And that power cord is plugged into my Astron over here, so I'm gonna leave it on the floor. Just a four pin comes with it. You also have a, um, a PTT for like a foot switch or an external PTT device. You have an external control here, which can be used for multiple different things. This is a 15 pin and they give you the pinouts and stuff in the manual where you could use that to control other outboard devices. Okay, we won't get into that right now, but you can use that for a, a lot of different things. You also have an ALC in for amplifiers and uh, I'm sorry, uh, ALC is, um, let's see, where was that at? ALC is here, rather, sorry. ALC is here. You have ADC in and DAC out. Receive out and a reference in, okay? So the connections on the back here allow you to hook up three different antennas at one time. And you can adjust this to where, so A1 is primarily for VHF only, two meters. The uh, A2 and A3 are both for HF, and you could use this to have, say, a tri-band on A2, and you have a monoband on A3, or you want a receive loop for A2 and a transmit on a vertical on A3. You can set that up, you know, and band independent. So as you switch through the software, you can say 20 meters is on my three element beam for transmit and a uh, 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 sky loop for receive, but then 40 is just on A2 for a monoband vertical for 40. You can set that all up band specific on the software. Very powerful, okay? So they also give you a LAN cord. Like I said, there's things that you need to know about this to really make this thing stand out. You wanna have a good shielded Cat6. You wanna have a good piece of coax on here. I have Messi and Poloni with the factory made ends that I'm using. Uh, the hyper, uh, was it the, the rap, uh, Hyperflex, I think it is. I'll figure that out after. Um, so good coax, you want a good ethernet to your computer, you want to have a solid, strong computer. Now, the specs are online of what you need to run this, but I'm going to tell you that being that when I show you, you can run four receivers at one time. You can have two slices and then two sub-receivers. You can listen to four bands at one time with a band scope of 80 megahertz wide. You're going to need a lot of processing power for that. So, on the computer I'm running today, I have a... Uh, AMD 8-core, uh, uh, it's been so long since I built that, water cooling, the GTX 1070 Ti, uh, NVIDIA, 16 gigs of RAM, solid state drive. So I have an 8-core and I overclocked to about 3.9 gigahertz. So that's what I'm running, it runs flawless. Now if you're gonna use this on like my laptop I have, the laptop I have is running a Ryzen 7 um, with uh, Vega 10 graphics and a solid state drive and uh, 8 gigs of RAM. And it seems to run it fine as well. So that gives you an idea of what I'm using. The only difference is that Ryzen laptop is five years newer than what I built here next to me. And also a good monitor. A really big monitor will really make this thing shine. If you're wanting to use this thing, you know, at home and have a 50 inch display and just capture the world at one time with this thing, a really good display will really make it shine. So we're gonna, that's the overview of this. Now I'm gonna show you the software 
okay and what it is now this is going to be the intro video so you're going to see what this is the specs now so they say 15 watts on hf up to 20 watts with pep i guess um 15 watts on six meters and seven up to eight watts on two meters and you can do all kinds of modes on this you can do digital radio mondial right on there all your upper lower sideband am fm narrow fm wide fm CW, the filter, it can be you know adjusted. I'm gonna show you all that in the software now. Uh, but that's your specs here. Now on the current drain, uh, I have only seen what I'm transmitting, uh, my meter on my Astron has only been peaking at just under four amps on transmit. Now, uh, that's not to say that's the official spec, but uh, I have a 30 amp power supply here and it's running it flawless. This thing hardly gets hot. And uh, you'll see on the DX version that they did include a fan on top for the DX version, but we're gonna get to that in a separate video. So let's go ahead and hook this back up, get the software running. I'm gonna take you through the website real quick and show you where to get the software. So the link to Expert Electronics is in the description. And the reason I wanna go over this site real quick is because it's kind of fun looking. You didn't know maybe that they had a lot of this stuff. I have the MB1 here, the Sun SDR2 DX, and the Sun SDR2 Pro is what we're looking at today. There are uh, several different versions of the software. The new one that just came out, is the expert SDR3 and they do have the expert SDR2 which is what I'm using on the pro version here now there are some implementations and advantages of the three but you have to make sure that you're using the right software for the device that you're playing with okay now if we go to uh, SDR2 Pro that's the one I have here or one of the ones I have here and uh, it gives you the main capabilities if you really want to get you know uh, in depth more than this video shows you like you know an independent receive path based on direct down conversion architecture and and so on um full duplex or half duplex modes and so on now if you go down here past the block diagram you will see the main improvements because you may have seen a sun sdr2 and you're like well what's the difference well here's some other stuff you know they used a different um adc here for a higher dynamic range the low pass filters and the power amplifier were increased to the fifth order instead of the third um, improved antenna switch inside and the idle connectors are shorted on the case so it eliminates crosstalk from hf antennas while working on the vhf band and vice versa All right so uh and they did used to have bnc and replace a more reliable mini uhf so there's your answer there um and you know some other things here for improved heat sink and such okay so we got a software and you'll look here, this does run on Windows, it does run on Linux, it does run on Mac OS. And here's a sneak peek, a peek. I did hear that that MB1 will run on Linux instead of Windows 10. So we're going to find that out when I really get into that thing. I may have to delete Windows and put uh, Ubuntu on there. <laughs> but anyways, um, in the meantime... Expert SDR2, here's the 64-bit and the, I guess, 32-bit, and the uh, that this is the latest one here, and this is the other one. So if you, for some reason, need to use an older version, then you can do that. Okay, so let's hear a little bit on 10 meters for a second, hear the audio, and then I'll talk about a couple things and give you an idea, and then we'll save another video for more advanced operations. Let's take a listen. USL, thank you very much for 5x5, five five, and thank you for coming back to my call. Now I have a lot of noise on 10 meters because of the solar on my RV. It generates a lot of noise out of that charge controller. It happens to affect 10 the most. Bravo, question mark again. Echo Echo 3, Bravo, question mark. What's the last letter? He's, uh, he's sitting right on a birdie here, right off my... Uh, my solar so let's go over here a little bit right so you can see an idea here let me give you an idea of what's going on this is your band scope okay and this is uh looks to be um 28365 28435 uh 70 megahertz 80 megahertz wide and uh here's your waterfall down here okay and the mouse i can simply take my receiver and drag it anywhere i want yeah, or i can drag the whole scope here Bravo, Charlie. I can use my, my mouse wheel to roll up on frequency here. I can change the filtering over here in a flash. Okay. Now, let's say, and you, 
and you can see all the noise that I have here from my solar and stuff. There's those long, those solid lines there. That's what those are. They stay there all day until the sun goes down. Then 10 meters is usually closed by that. So, moving to uh, this here. Now I can change my sample rate just for the sake of the video down to 39 kilohertz, all right? Or I can take the sample rate all the way up to 312 kilohertz. Watch this. All right. Now. Watch this. Oh, and there's a scrolling effect there. So if you want to just like uh, do a scroll and stop that. Now, here you go. Let's say you wanted to have two receivers. There you go. Now I have one receiver up top for 28.478. And I have a receiver down here for 20 meters. And I can mute or unmute, have both of them at the same time. We're going to change the sample rate back to uh, 39 for the sake of the video here. And here's my pass band for 10 meters and my pass band for 20. Now let's say you want, so you can listen to both of those at the same time. Let's say you want more. Let's say you want a sub receiver, okay, for um, a sub receiver on 10 meters here. Okay, sub receiver, and depending on how you control this, you know, you could put one over here somewhere, have one here, and I can do the same thing down here on the bottom. There's four slices uh, at the same time, okay? Right here. Four slices at the same time. 20 meters, 10 meters up top, okay? So there's a lot you can see that you can do with this. Um, it seems that uh, there's other things that we can go through like there are, I'm dying to try out the uh, digital radio Mondial. That's like a digital shortwave broadcast from different uh, shortwave stations. And you have your wide FM, digital uh, upper side, digital lower side. So digital ready for FT8, stuff like this. Narrow FM, CW, upper side, lower side. You have your uh, amplitude modulation with a reduced carrier and a synchronous amplitude modulation as well as AM. <laughs> some major lightning crashes coming in so now it's really starting to wipe out but you get the idea the quality of the audio on this thing without any filters turned on and in a future video we'll show you about the notch filtering how I could turn that on and then I could notch out an individual spot right there look at that all right I can notch out birdies on certain frequencies Notch it right out. See that? So you can do a lot with this software. And I'm going to show you that next video. In the meantime, the Sun SDR2 Pro is rather awesome. All right, so you can see first line up here, the Sun SDR2 Pro. You can see 20 meters is, is really cranking right now. So I'm going to try to make some more contacts here. But um, stay tuned because we have a lot of stuff that I want to talk to you about and show you all this neat, fun stuff. And um, Gigaparts is the place to get it. They have the best deal. Thank you to Gigaparts for letting me borrow all this stuff uh, to trust me with this much amount of gear at this price tag. Um, but uh, check out gigaparts.com. The link is in the description along with the link to Expert Electronics so you can check out their website as I did, see all their fun stuff, and leave your comments below because I could have made this video two hours long and really dove through everything, but I think it's more beneficial to get started and plant the seed and let it grow because you're going to go out there and you're going to figure out more than I know about it or you already know more about it. I heard one guy that was up in New York a mile from Long Island. He was on a Sun SDR2DX and it made contact with him but he was talking about that radio and I tried and tried. I just couldn't do it uh, with the band conditions but there are people out there using these and there are people out there that know the architecture and what is built inside this box and what has been put into that software and I think that's the direction I'm going. I really I can't wait to get that MB1 back up on this desk and show you that. That's fun. In the meantime, 
More videos on the way. Check out all the links in the description. And 7-3. This is KJ4YZI.